Alex is consulting their Edwardian farming manual on how to store hay outside. It recommends building a hay rick. So we've managed to acquire the most up-to-date version of the Book of the Farm to help us through the year. And I'm just looking at some of the uh, hay ricks or hay stacks as it's called here. Um, and we're quite interested in uh, the, the, the shape of this one, which is very much what we're trying to achieve. To keep the hay dry, it advises that the rick is thatched. Luckily we found these old timber speeders. Yeah, they'll do just the job for our rack, in which to build our rick. But rain's not the only obstacle they have to overcome. There's also vermin. The solution is to build it off the ground, on staddle stones. The design of this stone, and this goes back hundreds of years, is, 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 is so designed essentially so that rats, they climb up to here to get into your corn and of course they just can't get over the edge. Okay, so it stops vermin, at least mammals anyway, getting into your corn. The boys have bought some more hay from a local farm. They need to build the rick before the wet weather sets in. Well, we better start getting this on the rick. <coughs> if the hay gets damp, indeed, if it gets saturated and we can't dry it out, it's quite simple. It rots. It loses all of its nutritional value. So it's, it's, uh, it's next to useless. So that's a disaster. This is going to be like the best part of a week's work, if not more. Yeah, but it's going to feed our livestock for how long? Several months? It's going to be worth it in the end, Alex. Alex and Peter hope they've stored enough hay to feed the livestock. They must ensure it's kept dry all winter. The farm there. Edwardians would have thatched a rick, rather like a cottage. Hello Keith, good to see you again. You. Thatchers Bill. Keith Payne and Bill Liversidge have come to help. Nice to see you. So what do you think then? Yeah. Well, I'm impressed Alex, it's so much neater than I thought it might be. Have a look at that. Good. Now, Alex has read about an ingenious way the Edwardians mechanised thatching. The, the idea of that machine is that you can put reed through it, uh, thatching reed, it stitches it together and um, it comes out in a continuous mat. Wow. I, pu I push the reed through, uh, keeping it the same thickness all the way through. Instead of spending weeks thatching a rake, they would only spend a few hours, which gave them time to do hedging and stone walling and things like that. Yeah. So, you know, it was a labour saver as well, really. I'm actually feeding this through um, the same as uh, you, you would cloth through a sewing machine. Try not to pull it too much, otherwise right, you might okay. cock, you might cock the, the works up. Oh. Whoa. Oh dear, Bill, sorry. I've um, just taken my eye off the ball here a second and we've dropped the stitch. Well, you, you really have got to concentrate on what you're about, mine, otherwise... Right. Uh, if this comes undone on the rick, we, we, we're going to have a, a, a wet, wet spot on the rick, so yeah. if you could pay attention a bit more and I'm sorry, Bill. stop looking around. There you are. In she That's goes. That's good, good as I reckon to be quicker to thatch it in the old traditional way and <laughs> employ you two doing it with this thatch mat making machine. <laughs> Here's the end. The thatch making machine has produced enough matting to cover the rick. Now the tricky part, attaching it. Right, with these pegs, Alex, we want two along this edge, okay? In here and in there. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to twist them in the middle so they become like a grip. Yeah. Double twist. Nice and soft on your hands then. Yeah. Points upwards, okay? Then it doesn't course water into the middle of the stack. It's sort of coming in like that. Coming yeah. on that top string and try to catch that string with the first one. Yeah, nice like that. uphill, yes. Going uphill. Yep. Yeah. Drive them in with your hands. Got them in there like that. Lovely. And then, and then give them the last touch. <laughs> <laughs> Traditionally, this rick would have been thatched by lashing bundles of straw to the roof. 
a process that would have taken six hours. Using the machine-made mats takes just 40 minutes. Oh, there we go. One waterproof rig. Good job. Well, lad, much. you've done an excellent job. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be waterproof. Well, let's hope so. Uh, just one little thing that I think you ought to be wary of when you uncover it and feed it to the animals in the winter. Right. Just be aware of the, the spores, the white spores that come out, because it will give you a thing called farmer's lung, right. and it will give you breathing problems in the, in the future. So right. I would suggest that when you uncover it, you do wear a mask. Mm. Okay. But other than that, I'm sure it will stay nice and dry, and yeah. the animals will appreciate it in the winter, you, the hard work you put into it. Back in September, Alex and Peter built a hayrick to feed the cattle through the winter months. It's finding out whether the hay is edible. Now the cows are feeding on grass, they've got a surplus of hay. Edwardians would have sold this, so Alex has asked Devon farmer Francis Mudge to assess its quality. It's, it's, it's smelling nice, yeah, it ain't that all right. It smells, you know, fairly sweet, uh, uh, the, the bullocks and that, I'll eat that, no trouble at all. So you're looking for sweetness? Yeah, yeah, look at, you know, looking at it. So we've actually had a chance to bail some of the stuff out of the rick. Yeah. This, this is from the top, isn't it, like, you know, you can see it's not... not That's quite, right. Not quite so good as that in the, in the, bo in the bottom there, right? You know? Right. And also, I would have thought it's a different part of the field, isn't it? Uh, it is, actually. It's, it's one of the higher meadows. Yeah, yeah, because it, it's a lot coarser grass and... In yeah, the bottom of that, right? I mean, is this still sellable as a, as a feed stuff? Oh, well, yeah, cattle will still eat it. They'll still eat it? Yeah. They'll still yeah. go for that. With expanding Edwardian cities came more horses, needing even more food. So there was a tidy profit to be made from selling hay. What we are concerned about, first and foremost, is whether this is a good enough quality to sell at market. Yeah, you, 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 could, you could sell it, it could, animals would eat it, there's nothing wrong with that. It's only, a, it's a bit coarser than the other, but they'll still eat it all, it's eatable. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. 